Hello and welcome to the Run Testers. My name's Nick and in this video we're going to be talking about daily trainers and more specifically our favourite daily trainers. Now, all of the Run Testers are keen runners, obviously, and we each have different requirements and what we look for in a daily trainer. So in this video we're going to be talking about what those attributes are, what we really look out for when we're picking out a shoe we're going to use every day for our training, and then we're going to talk about our favourites. So we'll each have one big top pick, our favourite daily trainer, the one that would go in our rotation if we were buying it again today, and then one smaller honourable mention. This is not going to be one of our full list videos, we'll have a more comprehensive daily trainer roundup coming where we talk about all the standout picks on the market and where they might fit in. Today we're just going to run through our actual picks as runners, what we're going to be using if we have the choice. So when it comes to daily trainers, I am a big cushioned fan. I generally always go for a shoe that I enjoy running in. It's probably not the most performance-based uh, shoe in my pile, but it's a shoe that I take out and I just enjoy running in. So the shoe I've picked is the Superblast. And the reason I like the Superblast so much is that it is, it's a bit more than just your average daily trainer. There's a lot of cushioning in it. There's a lot of stack in it. It's quite bouncy, so you get a really nice fluid uh, transition that just sort of bounds you along as you're running. It's great for longer runs because it just really minimizes the impact but also really helps you just bound along comfortably um, to tick off all of those miles right to the end of the run. Um, I When I started testing this shoe uh, early on in the year I wasn't really marathon training so I tended to use it more for between 10k and about 20k runs. Recently I've, I'm trained for Burnley Marathon now and I've picked this up again um, as a marathon training shoe and I've been using it for some of my longer runs and tempo runs uh, and I'm absolutely loving it for those. It's just it's got everything you want from a cushion shoe, but also everything you want from a daily trainer as well. It's it's great for slower runs, um, but it's also really nice when you want to pick up the pace as well. So for me, a daily shoe is all about something that I want to go running in. Uh, and sometimes when I'm, I finish work and I need to go for a run, I probably don't really want to go for a run. So the shoe that I want to pick up is going to be the one that it, it, it is just more fun for me and the one that is going to make that run as enjoyable as possible. So I'm going for the Super Blast for that reason, just because it's really nice and versatile. But if you want to go slow and you want to have a nice, comfortable long run, it does the job as well. The shoe that I nearly picked is the Hocker Mac 5. Now, what I really like about the Hocker Mac 5 is that it is not a plated shoe. It's not a super shoe. It's just a great, lean versatile daily trainer that skews more towards the speed. I would say that the Super Blast skews a little bit more towards the other side. It's more comfortable, it's more about cushioning. This is more about speed, but it can handle easier runs as well. I did a lot of my marathon training last year in this shoe when I wanted to go out and I was doing intervals or if I was doing a tempo run uh, and I wanted something that would go fast, uh, but I didn't want to use a carbon plate shoe for it. So the Mac 5 is great for that. It's really good for intervals because when the intervals that I do tend to be maybe 60% of the session is intervals and then 40% is just easy running. Um, and this does all of that really well. So it might be that I'm doing 50 minutes of easy running as part of my big interval session. Um, and this really feels great for that, but also means I can run at my top pace when I need to join those intervals. So it's just a fantastic shoe. It's very comfortable, feels very light on the feet. There's a lovely fluid transition in it. Um, and there's not too much stack in it either. It does feel relatively lean um, as, as running shoes go. So it's just a fantastic, fast um, all-rounder that really skews towards those faster training runs. Hi, I'm Jane, one of the run testers, and these are my daily training running shoes. No surprise for anyone, but my first pick is the Nike Z-Max Invincible 3. I wear this shoe for most of my training, unless I'm trying to do something quicker. So I know that when they released this shoe, it was mainly designed for kind of long miles, easy miles, but I do think the Zoomax foam is just, I just love it. I really love a really plush, super cushioned shoe. And I think you get a lot of responsiveness and a lot of bounce from this shoe. And I wear it for, like I said, most of my training, most of my easy, all of my easy miles. And um, most of my long runs in the run up to London Marathon, I did in this shoe. I then raced in the um, fuel cell, the New Balance Fuel Cell Elite B3. And I found that I'd wear that for my tempo sessions and my faster sessions in the week, but I'd wear this for pretty much everything else. It's taken a lot, a lot of miles. It's pretty durable. The downside is it's a little bit slippy on wet concrete, but I just, I just love the responsiveness. I love the bounce. I love 
I feel excited when I run in this shoe. I love the sinking comfort and the plushness when I put it on. And I think when running on tired legs, which if I'm doing a big training cycle like a marathon, most of the time my legs are tired and I love putting this on, but it is just the shoe I reach for most of the time. If I'm not testing a pair of shoes, I want this on my feet. And I wear the older versions too, but the Invincible 3 has definitely been a standout for me. So yeah, this is my, my top pick. Probably not a shock for anyone. I could do the PR for this shoe, I bloody love it. And then my second pick, which is super surprising, I've never liked this shoe, I've not liked old versions of the shoe at all, is the Essex Gel Nimbus 25. Again, there's a theme here. I love a super plush, super cushion running shoe. If it's got a massive stack height and a lot of foam, I'll probably like it, it's a Jane shoe. Um, and I really was surprised by this shoe. I really like it. There's a lot of comfort here, a lot of plushness. A lot of kind of padding around the collar and it is just a really comfy shoe I did a few long run, a few of my long runs for the marathon in this shoe again it's one I reach for quite a lot because it's just comfortable and responsive so this is my second pick so my top pick is an oldie but a goodie and despite a slew of new plated super trainers vying to be on our feet for those daily training miles I think the speed 3 still stands out as one of the best all-rounders going and the older it gets, the more deals there are, so that's an absolute bonus. Now, why I like it, the combination of Power Run PB midsole foam, the nylon plate, and that speed roll geometry, I think it works an absolute treat. At 236 grams in my UK men's size eight, they're also light, I think they're responsive, they're agile, they're punchy at faster paces, but there's actually enough balanced cushioning to protect you when you're moving at easier paces too. Now, beyond the midsole, I also love how roomy they are with uppers that really flex nicely. There's lots of toe box wiggle room. And again, so I think there's balance in the heel padding. So they're light and still comfy over the long distances. Now I ran a marathon a day for 67 days in these shoes and they handled everything that that run across Europe threw at them. And to boot, the durability was excellent. So for an all round versatile daily trainer, I think the Socony Endorphin Speed 3 tick all the right boxes. And for me, they set the benchmark for that do it all daily trainer category. Now my runner-up honorable mention is the Hoka Mac 5. This is another shoe that I regularly reach for for daily miles. It's another seriously versatile shoe that I think can happily go from low and slow efforts where you're just plodding around right up to race pace. And it really kind of excels for me as a do-it-all daily trainer, though I think it has a tempo run sweet spot. Now if you're after light, nimble, disappearing foot feel plus a snappy ride with a good response, a good rocker roll that eases you through your stride, I think again these do the lot. Plus they're nicely durable and they're at the lower end when it comes to pricing. So that's the Hoka Mac 5 is my runner up. So in terms of what I look for in a daily trainer shoe, I want something that gives me a scope to run a mixture of different runs. So if I've got a planned session, maybe a quicker session and I go out and I'm not 100% feeling it, I can ease off and run a little bit slower and it won't feel uncomfortable to do that in that shoe. And also if I'm going out and doing a slower run and I want to actually finish off a little bit quicker in that session or actually want to run a faster run, then that's the kind of shoe I'm looking for ultimately that offers a bit of everything. Now, in terms of the shoe that I think fits best for me right now and offers that, I would probably say that I've reached most for the Pocket Mac 5. Now I thought the Mac X was going to replace my kind of daily trainer pick, but ultimately the added weight on that shoe, I think, you know, I don't think you're getting a massive mount from the midsole that I think really makes it a bigger or better option than the Mac 5. I think with the Mac 5 for me, I like the fact that it's nice and light. I like a light daily trainer shoe. Um, I think ultimately it definitely veers on the kind of faster stuff. And if you want to do that, it's very comfortable at that. But at the same time, if you want to slow things down, the midsole feels enough there to kind of let you ease off. I think, you know, I would probably max out at like half marathon distance and generally most of my training runs probably max out of that at the moment. So for me, it kind of works well from that point of view. So for me, in terms of my daily training pick, I would go for the Hocker Mac 5. I think it's nice and light. I think if you want to run quicker in it, it can. And if you want to ease off in it, you know, it's absolutely comfortable to do that as well too. So a very well rounded, versatile daily trainer, the Hocker Mac 5. So my honorable daily trainer mention goes to this, the Socony Triumph 21. Now it's a toss up between this and the Asics Gel Nimbus 25. Now the reason I've gone for this is that like the Gel Nimbus 25, you can run slow, long, easy, comfortable miles in this shoe. I think that's really what the Gel Nimbus 25 is built for. I don't think it's really built for much more than that. Whereas I think with the Triumph 21, it has scope to run a little bit quicker in it. If you want to run a little bit more up-tempo in it, it's not against or not out of its remit to be able to do that. You know, I don't think it's too heavy. I think the upper is really strong in terms of offering really good support. Um, 
and it's got a nicer rocker feel, I think, compared to the Gel Nibbers 25 to make it a shoe that's a little bit more versatile. And that's really the thing for me. I want that versatility. Also, I think durability-wise, I think this is really strong shoe for that kind of daily trainer kind of profile as well. If it's something that you want to log a lot of mileage in, then this is a shoe I think is well suited to doing that. So for me, honorable mention, Saucony Triumph 21, definitely a shoe that veers more to that kind of longer, kind of comfortable, easy paced runs. But ultimately, I do think it has the scope and the ability to run a little bit quicker as well and not feel kind of uncomfortable to do that. So yeah, my honorable mention is the Saucony Triumph 21. So my favorite daily trainer this year is the Asics Super Blast. And this really exemplifies what I look for in a daily trainer, which is I like a versatile shoe for sure. And generally I like a shoe that really excels on longer, harder runs. So usually in my training, I'm building towards a marathon and the kind of workouts I do for that won't necessarily be all out speed sessions a lot of the time where I would probably use something like a carbon shoe, but kind of longer workouts where I progress the pace and finish with half hour at a pretty hard pace or do a hard hour again at like a steady pace. So they're not all out in terms of the pace they're doing, but they are fast and hard enough that I want a shoe that handles them better than the standard cushion daily trainer. I want something with a bit more life in it. And that's really what the Super Blast is great for because it is incredibly comfortable. You can use it for recovery runs, just completely easy plods, go and do five miles very easy the day after a workout. It does that really well but it's also got a lot of bounce, a lot of pop in that midsole that means you can use it for those longer workouts, especially tempo runs and long runs. It's amazing for those runs. Like I really love using the shoe for long runs in particular. I have actually also gone down the track with it and done 800 meter reps and it's not terrible for that. Like it is quite a big shoe and it does feel a bit awkward if you start going towards kind of sprinting speeds, but at that steady pace where the aim for me is usually just to put in something akin to a marathon effort, even though if I'm not running a marathon pace in the workout because it's during a training block, and just tick over in a shoe that protects the legs quite well, provides a little bit of assistance, but isn't necessarily a full carbon shoe, which I don't want to use all the time for those kind of workouts. So over the course of the week, I might do like one progression run, one longer workout, a couple of easy runs, and that's the kind of thing that Super Blast does really, really well, just reserving those all out speed sessions for a slightly smaller, faster shoe. So yeah, it's a very expensive shoe. Obviously there is big cap with that here it's obviously a super high stack shoe as well although i do think it's still quite stable and it runs a bit more naturally actually than some of the lower stack plated trainers out there but it is a shoe that i just love running and it really makes runs fun to pull it on and go out and use it every day and if it does start to pop up in sales which i hope it will in time uh, then it's one i'd be looking to snap up if you can as a really good daily trainer. And then my honorable mention is a new shoe this year is the Adidas Boston 12. Uh, this is a really great all round versatile shoe as well. It's a bit like Super Blast. It's got a little, probably tailored a bit more to speed and it's not quite as comfortable around the upper, which is probably the main reason that it's not my overall pick because I don't find it the most comfortable upper. But underfoot is great. It's got that dual density midsole with a much improved Light Strike EVA foam under Light Strike Pro that creates a smooth, fast ride. Can use this for pretty much everything. It's good for long runs as well. It's great for short sessions, good for just mooching around. I prefer the more comfortable feel overall of the Super Blast, especially for long runs. But the Boston 12 is another really good pick and it's available at a much cheaper price and already popping up in sales. So that's one to consider for sure. All right, that's our roundup of our favorite daily trainers. Let us know what you think in the comments below. What are your favorite daily trainers this year? Like I said, we'll come back soon with our full list video on daily trainers where we run through more of the other options on the market. So if you don't like anything we've talked about in the video, hopefully there'll be a shoe in that video that you might like. In the meantime, please do like, subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.